Hey guys, it's Heather from Here She Grows, and I'm here with one of the best foliage plants I've ever grown in my garden. And it doesn't look like much right now, but silver sage is an awesome plant. So it's Salvia argentea, and it's gorgeous, but it's past its prime, it's flowered. Uh, Salvia argentea is a biennial, so I primarily grew it for the foliage because it's spectacular and it looks pretty tatty right now, which is why I'm going to share with you what I'm doing and how I'm gonna keep it growing in my garden. And honestly, I didn't expect this to return this year. So I planted it for the first time last year, started it from seed in the wintertime indoors, and um, it was gorgeous last summer and it was all foliage. So the second year is when it blooms, it's biennial. And um, I didn't really expect that it was going to bloom because um, this area, so this is directly off of my patio where I had this planted and it's planted beneath a um, vanilla strawberry tree hydrangea and uh, the snow piles up here. When we shovel this, we just pile it here. So Salvia argentea likes drier conditions. It's got that beautiful felty leaf, which is a pretty telltale sign that it really can withstand uh, drought conditions, dry conditions. It doesn't like to be wet. So I thought, eh, this may not come back. So I started more from seed this past winter and um, I was going to have to replant it anyway, whether it flowered or not. So because once it flowers, it peters out and you got to start fresh. So that's where I'm at right now. And it flowered this year and I didn't expect it, but it was beautiful. So I have a few flowers left, but I'm going to, it's time to tear it out. And this is my very last chore in the garden. And then I can sit back maybe a little bit, but um, can chill a little bit. But once I get these in the garden, um, I should have uh, beautiful foliage this year and then hopefully flowers again next year. But one of the great things about this plant is it is a pollinator magnet. The hummingbirds and the bumblebees and the honeybees absolutely love it. So I'll show you what I've got here. These are what I started from seed. Bring them a little closer. Isn't that gorgeous? So every summer I open my garden up to my neighbors and it's a no-knock policy. The gates are open, the dogs put away and they just can walk back any time during the day that it's open. And I love watching because this neighborhood is so full of kids and the neighbors bring their kids back. And this is one of the very first plants all the littles gravitate to because it is such a soft plant and the leaves get huge, they get enormous. So the kids love to touch it, they're ooing and aahing, and I love watching their reaction to this plant. It's such a cool plant. I don't like starting a whole lot of seeds indoors. I don't have the space for it for one, um, and I don't really have a whole lot of patience for it because it seems like as the season wears on, the spring season wears on, and these are growing inside, I just find it a little stressful having to keep up with all of my seedlings that I've started. But this is going to be a mainstay in my garden. I will have it every year because the foliage is spectacular and now I have the flowers and I've experienced that, which I really didn't expect for that to happen either. But um, I, res I got my seeds from uh, select seeds. I ordered them last winter. That's where I've gotten them the last couple years. And then I start them uh, late winter indoors. And one of the things you want to remember when you're doing this is the watering situation. Never water from the top. I don't ever water from the top with any of my seedlings when I start them inside. Uh, you want to water from the bottom, especially with this plant, because they can rot out pretty easily if you're watering from the top and these leaves get wet. They don't like that. But um, it's a pretty easy thing to grow. I mean, actually, it's really easy to grow. And if you need a pop of something, a really cool foliage in the, in the garden, which I think foliage is huge, because as the season wears on in the wintertime, the... Um, you know, flowers are not, they're not long lasting and foliage is kind of what carries the garden through. And this has been the plant that looks great everywhere. So from the, the foliage to the flowers, and uh, it's one of those things that I will keep planting every year because I love it that much. So uh, I'm gonna tear all this out, but uh, yeah, all the flowers are gone, but it's looking pretty ratty. I'm gonna tear all of this guy, these guys out, but uh, let me show you a leaf here. So see the leaves are really past their prime too. Normally these would be really silvery and fuzzy, but they're kind of shot. So I'm gonna tear all of it out, clean it up. I've got some summer snowflake foliage uh, that's really yellowed up pretty good. So I can take that down too. So I'm gonna clean this area up, replant my fresh stuff, and then I'll show you the finished result. So I've made some ants very angry in here. Um, so I'm gonna have to step away from this for a second because they've been 
crawling all over my legs and stuff. So, but I want to show you real quick, one of the last ones I'm going to tear out here and it has a few flowers left, but isn't that a beautiful flower? So that's Salvia Argentia the second year. The first year you'll have foliage and this foliage is getting on with it, but um, that's what the flower looks like. Hummingbird pollinator magnet. And that is my pile of old Salvia Argentia. And that's the area that I was showing you earlier before everything got pulled out. So I'm gonna replant this with more of those little Salvia Argentia that I started indoors this past winter. And I think I'm gonna throw some coleus in here one of these days when I get back to, get back to the store and uh, find a color that I like, some sun coleus. I love that plant. But um, it's looking a little better already. So I have a little bit more work, so I'm gonna wait for those ants to clear away before I go stand in there. And um, yeah, and then it'll be replanted. So I've got all of my little seedlings in place, kind of scattered about. These are going to get huge, but I do tend to plant them a little tight, um, maybe about 15 to 18 inches apart. The leaves get enormous, but I do plant close because I'm trying to suppress weeds too. And I just like instant gratification. I think I've told you that before. But um, I'm out of my plant tone, and all I have left is a little bit of is garden tone. So I'm gonna throw a pinch of that into each hole, water these things in, and wish it well. And uh, this should be, these grow quick, so these should be filling in in the next four weeks or so, and I would say by, by sometime mid to late July, this is going to be gorgeous. And there it is. It's finished. And it's so worth it. I mean, not that it took much effort. Um, the only thing that took a little effort was starting them from seed inside, but that's kind of a piece of cake too. But you can always already see the fuzziness of those leaves and they're going to get enormous. And I also like to add some beneath my fairy rose here. So it's a nice little area leading into onto the patio. I've got four of them here, just kind of rounding the corner. So now I'm just giving them a good drink, uh, letting them settle in a little bit. Really trying to avoid the foliage. Oops, and it didn't work quite so well on that one, but it's gonna be a hot one today, so all that should dry long before nighttime. So it should be fine. And if you're wondering why the, so the my water looks um, kind of brownish. It's because I have a little bit of compost tea in here. So that was my very last garden project. Can you believe it? Um, I just have to keep up on weeding now. And if it wasn't so early in the morning, I'd probably pop a beer, sit back and enjoy my work, but I'm not a big fan of morning drinking. So um, that's in the ground. And I think you could tell from my soil that it's really difficult to dig in. It is so dense, clay soil. And I think we all have our soil challenges. We always want what we don't have. Uh, but Salvia Argentia is a true testament to its ability to, to thrive in those conditions. So if you have similar conditions and um, you don't really want to pamper plants, because I certainly don't do that, uh, that's definitely one to try. So you'll find the link to select seeds. Uh, to order this for next year, so you can't start them now, um, but it's definitely one to try, especially if you're looking to create a moon garden or you love, uh, want an all white garden. I'm sorry, guys, I got a little bit of flare there. Um, but if you if you want an all white garden or you just want something very textural at the entrance to your garden, which is where I put it. I put it around the edges of my patio because I want to be able to see it. It's such a cool leaf. And then I had the added benefit of flowers, which I didn't think I was going to get. So I'm going to keep this in my garden for a long time and I hope you give it a try too. The links are below for ordering seeds for next year and um, definitely one to try guys. Thanks for watching and if you haven't already and uh, you like this video, please consider liking or even subscribing. I'd appreciate it and have a great, great summer.